Good morning, and welcome to the traditional service for this Sunday. Today's theme is about light, specifically being the light of the world and doing the work of God in our daily lives. And with that in mind, we begin with today's call to worship. Blessed be your name, O God, forever. You reveal deep and mysterious things. You are light, and in you is no darkness. Our darkness is passing away, and already the true light is shining. Good morning, church. Let us center ourselves as we go to God in prayer. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. Lord, we thank you for waking us up this morning and bringing us to this time of worship. We're just so thankful that we find ourselves in a time and in a season where you are primary. We've come into this place in our spaces where we are. We may be in our pajamas. <laughs> we may be up having breakfast. But God, we're here to worship you. So come, Holy Spirit, fill this place where we are. Fill our hearts with your love. Fill our homes with the anointing of your spirit that we can forget about the cares of the world and our hearts and our minds will be prepared to receive the word that is coming today, a word that will give hope, a word that will give encouragement, a word that will bring peace in the midst of our storms. So come, Lord, be with us as we've come to worship. In the name of your precious Son, Jesus the Christ, amen. As we gather, we should always proclaim our faith to each other. So join me as we recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Good morning. A reading from the book of Israel, chapter 40, verse 21 through 30. Don't you know, haven't you heard? It was announced from the, from, to you from the beginning. Haven't you understood since the earth was founded? God inhabited the earth's horizon. Inhabited are like locusts stretched out to the sky like a curtain. It spreads out like a tent of dwelling. It, God makes dignitary useless, and the earth ju judges into nothing. Scarcely they are planted, sc scarcely sown, scarcely is their shoot rooted in the earth. When God breathes in on them and they dry up, the windstorm carries them off like straw. So to whom I will you compare me and who is my equal? said the Holy One, look up to, look up, up at the sky and consider who created this, who, the one who brings out their attendants one by one, summoning each of them by na name. Because of God's great strength and mighty power, no one is missing. What, why do you say, Jacob, and declared, Israel is my way, is hidden from the Lord. God, my God ignores my don't you know, haven't you heard, the Lord is an everlasting God, the creator of the end of the earth. He doesn't grow tired or weary. His understanding is beyond human reach, giving power of the tired and reviving the exhausted. Youth will become tired and weary. Young men will certainly stumble. But those who hope in the Lord 
will renew their strength. They will fly up the, on wings like eagles. They will, they will run but not be tired. They will walk but not be weary. We continue with our theme of light for the first hymn today. An appropriate one, Christ is the world's light. I invite you to sing it with me at home. Christ is the world's light, Christ and no other. Born in our darkness, he became our brother. If we have seen him, we have seen the Father. Glory to God on high. Christ is the world's peace, Christ and no other. No one can serve him and despise another. Who else unites us, one in God the Father, glory to God on high. Christ is the world's life, Christ and no other, sold once for silver, murdered here our brother, he who redeems us, reigns with God the Father, glory to God. Good morning. A reading from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 9, verse 16 through 23. If I preach the gospel, I have no reason to brag, since I'm obligated to do it. I'm in trouble if I don't preach the gospel. If I do this voluntarily, I get a reward for it. But if I'm forced to do it, then I've been charged with a responsibility. What reward do I get? That when I preach, I offer the good news free of charge. That's why I don't use the right to which I'm entitled through the gospel. Although I'm free from all people, I make myself a slave to all people to recruit more of them. I act like a Jew to the Jews so I can recruit Jews. I act like I'm under the law to those under the law, so I can recruit those who are under the law, though I'm, though I myself am not under the law. I act like I'm outside the law to those who are outside the law, so I can recruit those outside the law, though I'm not outside the law of God, but rather under the law of Christ. I act weak to the weak, so I can recruit the weak. I have become all things to all people, so I can save some by all possible means. All the things I do are for the sake of the gospel, so I can be a partner with it. Churches, we're in a space today dealing with the pandemic. Um, even this week, there has been so much tragedy that I've witnessed. I come with a heavy heart, and I join you today. Many of you have suffered loss. Many of you are going through trials and tribulations. I join you today. So let us join hearts and go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, it is in the midst of chaos that you ordered peace in this world. It was in the midst of a storm when the disciples were so afraid and they said, don't you care that we perish, Lord, that you said, peace be still. Lord, we need you today. We come before you with our hearts wide open. We come with your thumbprint on our life 
and we come casting our cares on you this morning, O Lord, knowing that even in the midst of whatever we are experiencing right now, you can bring peace. So we give to you our hurt. We give to you our bereavement. We give to you our loneliness. We give to you, God, our depression. God, we give to you everything that is causing life to tear us apart on the inside. We give it to you right now. Look on families today. Look on those who are still struggling in the pandemic. And God, we just have to give you a praise and say thank you for those frontline workers who continue every day to move forward to give hope and encouragement. We have to praise you, God, and say thank you, Jesus, for the teachers that get up every day and go into a classroom or virtually teach somebody's child. We have to give you glory, honor, and praise, oh Lord, every time we think about your goodness in the midst of the madness that we're living in. So God, I just want to give you praise today. We have cares that we cast on you, but right now we say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for life. Thank you, Lord, for health. Thank you, Lord, for strength. Thank you, Lord, just for waking us up this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the use of the activities of our limbs. Thank you, Lord, for being God. You said it like this to Moses, I am. So, God, thank you for being the great I am and helping us to navigate this thing called life. And we will forever thank you and give you the glory. And we thank you, Lord, for the prayer that your son Jesus taught the disciples to pray. Pray with me. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed it be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, Lord, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today's scripture comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 16. Make your light shine so others will see the good that you do and will praise your Father in heaven. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Here's a fun fact. According to the Central Intelligence Agency's World Factbook, Mexico was estimated to be 
the 12th most heavily populated country on the globe in 2012 as an estimate. They estimated that Mexico comprised of about 123 million people. Wow. Hello, I'm Nick P. Some people simply refer to me as the guy with the beard, but today I simply come to you as a brother in the faith of Yeshua, Jesus. I simply ask your permission today to come to you with a sermon that I entitled, Let Your Color Glow. As you will see, I'm wearing a colorful garment called a poncho, and you might be wondering why. Well, I find what it represents to be quite meaningful and worthy of our attention today. This poncho was made in Mexico, and I not only remember that every time I wear it, but I also think of the culture of the people who made it, a culture that I am humbly still learning about. In fact, one aspect of Mexican culture that I find so amazing and that resonates with me even as a man of African descent is family values. The Mexican household can be very large, even often including members of the extended family, because it is normative in Mexican culture to hold dear to connectedness and responsibilities to both the immediate and the extended family. This mindset of a village, as we refer to it here at Gammon, motivates a lifestyle of selfless consideration and caring for others and a valuing of the spectrum of human existence. You see, in Mexican culture, I have learned that value is not placed on one's parents or children only, but also in one's grandparents, cousins, second cousins, and the list goes on. One's ability to thrive is not correlated solely to a few people, but with a large community a diverse community called a village. Because just as even the African proverb asserts, it takes a village. Here at the Interdenominational Theological Center, we pride ourselves in being just that, a village. In fact, we often seal the deal on social media with the hashtag, Hashtag ITC Village. Here at the ITC, we have a village of denominational seminaries as well as a non-denominational fellowship. The United Methodist Seminary is none other than the historic Gammon Theological Seminary, which is the only historically black seminary related to the United Methodist Church, the only one. At Gammon, we believe that the spectrum of humanity is beautiful, just like the wide spectrum of colors on this poncho. We believe that what makes humanity so vibrant is not just the outer color of our bodies, but also the color of culture. As a student of both the divinity program and the liturgical arts and culture program, I have learned a great deal about culture. So I learned a lot of fancy stuff like breaking common bad habits like saying pastoral or doctoral and to use the literal correct pronunciations of pastoral and doctoral. But I also learned about human culture. And because we never truly master or become competent in human culture, I am still on a lifelong process of learning. Bearing that in mind, I've learned culture to be defined in so many ways. But one way to bring all of these definitions together is to view culture simply as the way 
people live. Yes, the way people live every day. And if we be honest, we all live very differently, even on a day-to-day -day level. We all are informed by the food we ate as a kid, the radio stations our parents listened to, what church we went to as a kid. If our family wasn't religious, our physical location, our social location, our economic status, the institutions where we were educated, the country where we live, the music we listen to today, the movies and TV shows that we watch, the list goes on. Culture formation for us all occurs on a very day-to-day -day level. Think about it. What, made of, what motivates what time you get out of bed? Is it morning because you have a nine-to-five job at an office? Or is it evenings because you have night classes and you're a full-time student? Does this motivate what clothes you choose to buy and wear? Or what times you choose to post on Facebook? Does your job motivate what style or image you have? Or how you talk with people? Are most of your friends people you've met at work or people you've met at school? Do you listen to Latin jazz on your way to work because it was your father's favorite? Or maybe country music? because your mother was a huge Dolly Parton fan. Maybe you're like me and grew up on R&B, hip hop, and gospel. So that even motivates what music you listen to today or who you follow on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and Snapchat. All of these things affect the way we live and they make us unique. However, there is a popular politically correct buzzword that causes me to wrestle. And it asserts that we should be colorblind. This term is colorblindness. To be more specific, I'm referring to a social aspect of this term's usage, not the physiological aspect of colorblindness. You see, many people pride themselves in allegedly not seeing color. This is claimed to be a tactic to fight racism. However, I find it quite problematic. And this is why. Let's say that I set an egg on the kitchen counter by the refrigerator, and it slowly rolls off and falls behind the refrigerator and breaks. I then go about my merry life because if it's out of sight, then it's out of mind, right? Besides, who feels like doing the work of moving the refrigerator out of the way to pick up a nasty gooey egg and throw it in the trash? It's so much more convenient to just leave it there and not address it, right? Well, days go by and the egg starts to smell. And the smell gets worse because I never removed the egg, right? And the smell never goes away. And it attracts rodents. And then I buy rodent repellent and poison and pat my back, myself on the back for it because it's more convenient to quickly put poison down and not have to do the work of, again, moving the refrigerator to clean up the messy egg. Then, a friend comes over to talk, a friend that I invited, and the friend tells me that he smells something foul. My response is, that's rude, why would you say that? Just ignore it and don't talk about it. We're just here to talk about God and Jesus and other stuff. And my friend gets sick to his stomach from the smell and asks me to do something about it, please. Now, I am even more offended that they would dare acknowledge the smell. 
a smell that I've gotten used to and choose to simply ignore. I then tell my friend to leave because he is not willing to ignore the smell so that I can be more comfortable and empathize or to empathize with the fact that it's more convenient for me to not have to clean up a mess, even if it smells. My friends, this too is a culture because this reflects how so many of us live in our society. This way of life even affects the way that we relate to one another in church and in ways that we even do ministry. We often view church service, for example, as an opportunity to simply talk about Jesus while excluding the day-to-day -day experiences of the human beings who worship Jesus. We equate church as a place where we must ignore human experiences as if we aren't human, having human experiences ourselves as Christians. You can't be Christian and empathize with the human condition, can you? And we must only talk about what, that which makes some of us comfortable. I believe that one of the ways that this is done is through the mindset of colorblindness. By choosing to be blind to color, we are passively saying that color is not a beautiful aspect of life that God created and that it doesn't deserve our attention. We then also ignore the plight that some people experience because of the color of their bodies. We then also passively act as though color is the problem, the color and not something else that some of us may be uncomfortable with addressing and find it inconvenient to help out. This cracked egg behind the refrigerator that I'm referring to is racism and privilege. This is, this is the devaluing of people because of their color. And yes, ignoring color is devaluing. However, if we see the beauty of humanity as a vibrant spectrum, a beautiful, vibrant village, we will then see the problem occurs not with color, but with our prejudices. When beautiful hands made this beautiful poncho, the intention was to demonstrate the beauty of color, not to ignore or devalue it. However, one may say, I don't ignore the diversity of humanity. I welcome it. This is a great statement, an honorable ideology. However, today I want to encourage us to view the act of inclusion as being something more than an ideology, something more than a statement, people of God and something more than a multilingual or multicultural song we sing. I want to invite you to consider that genuine inclusion is a day-to-day -day effort of inconvenience. When you see someone is experiencing difficulty in your lived circumstance because of who they are, because of the color of their skin, because of newness to a circumstance, or because they are different in any way, make a practical day-to-day -day effort to do work that includes them in a real way. Don't just show that people matter by attending a protest, or by holding a sign, or by saying that you're an ally. Show, let may, I hope that we can show that people matter each day by helping to make life more inclusive, not just our ideologies. Today, I want to ask us the question, what can we do every day to make someone feel and actually be included by our ideologies and by our actions? Are we willing to be multicultural in a practical way? When we do this, this, 
we can truly help others to let their color glow. So let's pull that refrigerator back together every day and help someone else to let their color glow every day. I encourage you to see the beauty of your unique personhood and to look in the mirror and tell even yourself to let your color glow. Our scripture verse for today told us to be the light of the world so that we can take that light to the world around us and be God's example here on earth. Our final hymn today pairs well with that theme, and I invite you to sing along with me at home, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. I want to walk as a child of the light. I want to follow Jesus. God set the stars to give light to the world. The star of my life is Jesus. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. I want to see the brightness of God. I want to look at Jesus. Clear sun of righteousness, shine on my path and show me the way to the Father. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both. Alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. Today, as ascending forth, I want to extend an important a vital, a critical invitation to you, family. I want to extend this invitation to be a part of a village. Maybe you are at home wondering, how do I connect with a supportive village? How do I become more inclusive? How do I um, become a part of a village that is inclusive? I want to invite you to consider this village I call the kingdom of God. God is with you right where you are. And simply by accepting Christ into your life, you too can partake in this spiritual inclusion. Secondly, I want to even invite you to an even more closely knit community, and that's the net. If you are interested in learning more about the net and becoming a part of our community, I want to extend the invitation to you to consider what we call starting point which is an online conversation about our mission here at The Net. And thirdly, I want you to even see humanity as a village. You can be a progenitor of inclusion day to day by loving others, those who are different, embracing change, embracing shift, embracing different people with different ideologies and backgrounds. You too, can be the change that we all need. So won't you please join me as I go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Mother, Heavenly Parent, Blessed Creator, we thank you so much for your presence today. We thank you so, so much for inhabiting our worship, even in an online format. 
Lord God, we know that you are omnipresent, which means that you are with us even in our bedrooms as we're watching um, this program, This as we're watching this program today from our tablets and our laptops and our phones. We know that you are with us and we know that you love each and every one of us. Our uniqueness, the color of our bodies and our personhood. Lord, we thank you for seeing us, Lord, as both a village and as both as a beautiful individual, God. Lord, help us to embody your love on a day-to-day -day basis. Lord, help us to be progenitors of love in culture, in everyday culture, as we get up out the bed and as we go back to bed at night, Lord God. Help us to be a practical actualization of love and multiculturalism, Lord God. Thank you so much for the family here at The Net. Thank you for giving us the desire to want to be net casters and to cast the vision out to fish and not be picky about which fish we catch. Lord, help us to really understand what that means day to day. Lord, help us to not just embody an ideology, but Lord, help us to live and execute it. Lord, give us a passion for you and for your people and for your blessed creation called humanity. We thank you for sending your son to die for us so that we can partake in the blessing of affirmation from you and so that we can be progenitors of affirmation to others. We pray that you bless all the words as they were being heard and interpreted. And we pray that you bless even our thinking and processing of it. And we pray that you bless our living it out. And your blessed son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, we pray. Amen and Ashe. I pray that you go in peace and blessings as you live 